Yo, what's going on guys? This is Skate Gnarly. Today I'm bringing you a video talking about how to not fail basic military training. There are three things that I could think of that were like huge points about how to succeed at basic military training. And the first one um, is gonna be make sure that you go in shape. Now, there were tons of people um, at BMT while I was there, not necessarily in my flight, but there were a lot of people in my cousin flight, my brother flight, and uh, just around the whole squadron and other squadrons who weren't in shape because people obviously just go in shape. There's a lot of people, there's like 900 people with every week graduating or anywhere between like 700 and 900, something like that. And that's a lot of people. And you know, as much as your recruiter tells you to get in shape, get in shape, get in shape before you leave, make sure you run, make sure you run, or like, you know, you run a dep or whatever you guys do. Some people just aren't gonna be in shape. Some people are bigger, some people are smaller, some people aren't as healthy as other people. And you always have people that will get hurt. It's a weeding out process, it's just the way it is but in able to slim your chances down of getting injured at BMT, which is like one of the huge kickers for people, is to just go and make sure that you're in shape. Make sure that you can run a mile and a half no problem, or at least you can get it done without feeling like you're in so much pain, you know what I mean? Just make sure that you can actually run for a good amount of time, like 30 minutes. Make sure you can run straight for 30 minutes. Make sure that you can, you know, do as many push-ups as you can, at least 20, at least 20. Make sure you can do at least like 30 sit-ups, just because you'll you'll get to the point while you're at BMT to where you can do the amount that they require. But it's so much easier and stress-free to just go show up being able to do these things. Now. This is gonna help you, um, and a lot of people, you're gonna be like, oh, well, how does you know being in shape help with overall BMT and succeeding and graduating? Well, I don't know how it is for other people, but for me, um, I didn't necessarily stress about the BT test, but I had my doubts, right? You know, you're like, well, what if I get hurt and then I can't do the push-ups and sit-ups, but I don't wanna tell anybody that I'm hurt because then they're gonna send me to med hold. The reason you don't wanna get injured at BMT is because of med hold. You do not want to go to med hold unless you actually have to go to med hold. Now, that is up to your discretion. I'm not telling you, look, I'm not telling you to not go to med hold. I'm not telling you to lie. I'm just telling you that a lot of people end up in med hold. They end up saying that they're injured and then they end up in, um, okay, okay. So they go to the medical clinic. They sit, you know, they find out they're injured. This is what's up with you. Then they send you to med hold. And then you're in med hold. You're waiting to get healed or get kicked out. That's basically what it is. Some people will be at BMT for like eight months because of med hold. And they're basically sitting there day to day to day to day, just just there. And I mean, obviously they do some stuff, but it's not what we're doing because we're only there for eight weeks. We do stuff every single day, multiple things a day, and then we get out as fast as we can. But if you're stuck in med hold, not only do you have to resume where you left off at BMT, but then you're waiting for that certain amount of time as well. And it just can be a really big stressor for a lot of people. So you just wanna make sure that you're healthy, you're good to go, that you can get done what you have to get done. And if you have something, if you have one less thing to stress about at BMT or tech school or wherever you're at, it's gonna be better for you moving on into the future, you know, doing whatever you're gonna be doing, whether it's at BMT, tech school, operational, whatever it is. So. Being in shape is really key, um, not only at BMT, but in the Air Force in general. Um, so that is definitely a big recommendation is to show up in shape. So the second thing is gonna be knowing what you signed up for. And I know that sounds like, oh, well, that's weird. Like, how does that help me? You, you use it as a fuel. I signed up so that I can better my future and better my future with my wife. A lot of people sign up to serve the country. I mean, obviously I'm serving the country as well, but like my number one goal in life is providing for my family and the, for my future family, my family now, like my dogs and my wife, providing for them, providing for myself. But a lot of people, you know, might, might be different. You might have, you know, kids, you might be a single parent, you might be doing it for your mom and dad, you might be doing it because of the culture aspect of it, or you might be doing it because it's like a tradition for your family. There are so many different reasons that people join the military and people choose to serve their country. And using that as a fuel is, great for achieving what you need to get done. Um, sometimes you'll be running and you're like, oh, I really don't want to be here anymore. I hate it here. It's terrible. You know, and obviously everyone has these thoughts. They talk about it a lot at BMT about how like, oh, like even if you feel like, wow, why did I make this decision? Just remember why you are there. And that is literally me replicating exactly what they're saying. Uh, obviously my opinions don't 
directly correlate with the Air Force, and I, I try not to like make things super opinionated. I'm not making things opinionated, but that is what they have told us at BMT, and it is very truthful in the aspect of that. So it's really just awesome to use that fuel. In anything in life, it's awesome to just be like, wow, I'm doing this for this reason, so I'm gonna get it done, I'm gonna do it right. And it's the same thing with you know being physically in shape at BMT, it's one less stressor, and obviously you know that's not really a stress, but you can use it to get where you want to go, and it just doubles up on everything that you wanna get done, and it just helps, it just helps you achieve that end goal. Now, number three is gonna be doing things proficiently. And obviously it takes time and practice to get things right, but the number one thing that I can say that has to do with that is just, <laughs> it's funny because it's like the number one Air Force thing is like paying, paying attention to detail, but literally pay attention to detail, um, practice, 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 get done what you have to get done, do it right, and do it right the first time. That's kind of what they try to teach. Do it efficiently, do it fast, and do it right the first time. Um, you know, a lot of times at BMT, when you mess something up, you're like, oh, sorry, sir. And they're like, oh, obviously, you, you can't just say that. But, you know, uh, essentially, people will say that. And the MTIs can be like, don't say sorry, just fix it. And you're like, oh, God, okay. So you just have to make sure that you get it done right, whether it's folding a towel, rolling a T-shirt, folding anything, anything for that aspect, your bed, fold, you know, making your bed, or whether you're doing dust downs and details, you're cleaning a urinal or the freaking showers. It doesn't matter, just make sure that you're doing it and you're doing it right. If you do it wrong, you're just gonna have to do it again. And you're not gonna, like, you, you have to do it all again, you know? Like, there's really no reason to just, you know, half ass it essentially because, for one, you're affecting everybody else in your flight because literally BMT is like this, like, with everybody. You are working together at all times. And if you mess something up, you're not just messing it up for yourself, you're messing it up for everybody, or just the latrine crew, or just the utility crew, or just the bedliners, you're messing it up for everybody. So if you get it done the first time and you get it right, you have more time to write letters, more time to eat your protein bars at night in the day room, more time to, I don't know, draw a freaking picture, or sing songs to each other. So it sounds weird, but that's just kinda how BMT is. So the, the better you get stuff done, Number one, you're gonna impress your MTIs. Whether they act like it or not, you will. Because at you know, seventh week of training, sixth week of training, once they're a little bit more relaxed and they start talking about it, they're gonna be like, oh, this is like one of the best flights I've ever had. Or they're gonna say, this is one of the worst flights I've ever had. So, um, and you'll kind of get there. But honestly, it doesn't really matter um, what anybody thinks. And I say that in a kind of a weird way, like BMT is BMT and that's it. There's nothing else related to BMT. BMT doesn't carry anywhere that you go in the Air Force. You just have to get through it, take what you learn, and apply it. It does. It's not like in a couple years they're gonna bring up like, oh, well, this happened at BMT. Like, it's not like that. So it doesn't matter if you're an element leader. It doesn't matter if you're a dorm chief. It doesn't. None of that matters. They're not. They're not going to look back at that. What happens is they expect you to take that basic knowledge that you have about what you learned and how to be proficient, how to stay physically in shape, and why, how to, how to motivate yourself, how to stay healthy mentally, physically, spiritually, and how you can use that in the operational world and in tech school or wherever you go. You know what I mean? So it, it doesn't, there's, you can be like a brown noser, right? But it's not gonna get you anywhere if you're not being a team player. You have to work together to achieve the same end goal, and that's really important. And it, it all is under that same idea of being proficient, that number three topic, because you're trying to achieve the end goal, and you wanna do it the best that you can in the fastest way possible. And just the way to do that is to just be proficient. Use your teamwork, you know, just get done what you have to get done. So I don't want to like rant too much because that's kind of what it turned into, but that's the basic concept of it, you know, it's just you have to get done what you have to get done. And, you know, it's about, you know, putting service before self. It's about having excellence in all that you do. It's about having integrity. Like, and those are the core values of the Air Force. And a lot of people will say like, oh, that sounds cheesy. But essentially, like, that's why they're there. And obviously, it's not in that order. It's integrity first. Service before, service before self, excellence is all you do. But it's the concept, and that's important. So 
Um, honestly, one thing that I can say just to kind of wrap everything up is before you ship the BMT, make sure you know um, the core values. And actually think about it too. You know, they'll, they'll talk about it a lot in BMT, but think about it for yourself just because if you think about it for yourself, you'll be able to apply it a lot better. Like, oh, okay, I understand how I use that in real life. Because when I was at BMT and I heard those, I was like, well, I guess it makes sense for the Air Force. But when you get out um, of BMT and you get back to this real world that we're in now, you're like, wow, like, I hung up these pictures in the wall and I did it so that it would look good. I did that for myself and that's, you know, having excellence in, in everything that I do here. Um, and it's just, it's kind of the way that we apply it in our lives and like how you should have that same mentality at work and they expect you to have that mentality as well. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I want to, I want to help you guys achieve your end goal. I want to help you guys. Um, accomplish BMT because I don't want to see any of you ship to BMT and then just be like oh sorry I didn't make it I want all of you to go to BMT I want you to succeed and I just want you to have awesome careers awesome futures in the Air Force just because there's there's no reason why you shouldn't if you can put in the sometimes things do happen in your life and obviously it's not meant for everybody but I want a huge majority of you guys to be able to say look I rose my right hand and I made it through and honestly that's awesome it's so awesome like when I'll get messages like hey just want to let you know I graduated BMT coming to tech school now or hey I'm leaving you know tomorrow thank you so much for all the you know help that you've given me and all that stuff and it's like I really just want to be here as a resource for you guys to to know to help you know and understand what you need to know before you go so Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Again, I um, really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave your ship dates down below. If you have any questions at all about BMT, about anything, just feel free to leave it down below as well. Um, just because, honestly, I just want to help. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching, and peace out.